because I know God is going to bring a word, a rhema word, an on-time word for this house. Amen? So if you could stand on your feet, I want to welcome to our forefront one of the pastors of this ministry, Pastor Joyce Elliott! <laughs> Hallelujah! Amen. Let's give Jesus a hand clap of praise. Amen. Let's give God honor and glory in this house. He is worthy of honor and glory. Amen. He is worthy of the praise. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you and we praise you for tonight, God, in Jesus' name. Father God, we thank you, God, for the opportunity, God, to bring forth the word Father, we thank you, God, for the visionaries of this house, Dr. Deron Hepburn, God, Pastor Fung Hepburn, our first family, Father. Father, God, because he sees greatness in us when we don't see it in ourselves, God. And so, Father, we ask, God, that you would pour out blessings upon them that they won't have room to receive, God, in the name of Jesus. Father, let this be a word from you, God, in Jesus' name. Father, we just ask the Holy Spirit to step forward right now in the name of Jesus. Please take control, God, in the name of Jesus. And Father God, we will give you the honor, glory, and praise. We come against any distractions right now in the name of Jesus. We come against any type of attack from the enemy, God, that will come against this word in Jesus' name. And Father God, let all this done tonight be done to your honor, glory, and praise in Jesus' name. And we all said, amen. amen and amen and amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise as you take your seats in this house. I believe the Lord, uh, when Dr. Hepburn called me today, how many of you know sometimes you got to have a quick word? Amen. But the Spirit of the Lord had been dealing with something that I was about to do. When you come to me for counseling, some of the people know you don't have to raise your hand, but I give these little packets to people, which actually stands for the word of God, amen? And I was, and I told the Lord, I said, you know, I, I'm, I'm running off these, these packets, and I don't think anybody's really reading them. And I just was going to, I just told the Lord, I, I, I think I should go another route. And the Spirit of the Lord dropped in my spirit what I'm going to talk about today. Amen. Because the Word of the Lord lets us know. In Psalms 119 and 105, it says that the word is a lamp, what? Unto our what? Our feet and a light unto our path. So if we don't, what, what I want to encourage you in today is get into your what? Get into your word. Because if the word is a lamp unto our feet and a light to our path, I mean, if you know, that means that the word is what gives us direction. We have the word coming forth every Tuesday, every Friday, every Sunday, amen? And how many of you know that all of us don't get here on Tuesdays and Fridays and some of us are Sunday because maybe of work or whatever it is that we do. And so that means if we come to church to just hear the word and we don't follow up in our word in our private time. How many of you know that we have to make a habit of joining the Holy Spirit and allow him to open up the word to us? Many times when we go in the wrong direction, I mean, if you know, we go in the wrong direction because we don't know the direction to go in, so we go into our own direction. And that means that I can tell you, I, I, I've already gone into my own direction, and I really don't want to go that route again because that's not the direction that's going to take you to God. If we don't understand, and that's what I want to talk about tonight, I want to talk about the importance of getting into the word. 
Why do people not get into the word? Well, I don't really understand it when I read it. And the devil is laughing us straight this way. Because he does not want us to get into the word. He doesn't even want us to read the word. This has to be a day. We are Christians, right? Are we Christians? Are we really Christians? If we are really Christians, the book that teaches us our roadmap is what? It's the Bible. And how many of you know, today I went home, and I can just say, I went, I went home and I was just like, Lord, I don't know what I'm going to what you want me to do, because I really don't know what I'm going to do, but I want to know what you're going to do. So I go in, and I have a little room that I go into. So I went into my little room, and I was reading the word, and, I, and, and the spirit of the Lord, I knew he was telling me what to do because I, he just dropped something in my spirit. But do you know my phone started ringing, ringing, ringing and ringing and even though I didn't answer it I said let me let me just go and just answer it so I go and answer the phone and guess who it was it was somebody that we know real well and I said Lord have mercy if I had not answered the phone I would not have known certain things that I needed to know amen because it was Dr. Hepburn, and then it kept on ringing. See, that was a good ring, right? But then I said, let me just turn the phone, what, off. Because if I hadn't turned the phone off, how many of you know I would have been going to the phone? See, the Spirit of the Lord needed me to go and answer the phone. But then once I answered the phone, I needed to be able to hear from God. And so that last time, I just went in there and I just said, no more. When I looked on my phone, do you know I had all these phone calls all during the time I was in my little room trying to meditate? So how many of you know the enemy does not want us in our word? He doesn't want us to even open up our Bibles. And if the truth be told, we will go from week to week without opening our Bibles. And the enemy is saying, that is exactly what I want you to do. Because if you don't know what it is or what the direction is, you, we will go in the wrong direction and we will follow the wrong voice. Because if we're not following the voice of God, we're going to follow the voice of the enemy. And so the word of God, whether we know it or not, I don't, I don't know the word like that. I'm just going to tell you right now. I do not know the word like that. I have to go into the word and ask the spirit of the Lord, show me the direction. Where do I go in this word? What do you want me to do? And if you don't know what to read, just go to Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Galatians. God's going to speak to you. But if we do nothing, one of the things I love about Deacon Joseph, I know he got to be in his word. Know why? I don't know how he does it, but every morning, you're going to get a word from Joseph from the word of God, from the Bible. And so I said, well, if he can do that every day, I can do that too. But we have to be intentional about getting in our word. Because if we're not intentional about getting in the word, we are not. And then when we have opportunity to read the word and we don't do it, that means that the enemy is conditioning us in another direction. Because the word is what we have to have to move forward in the, way, in the things of God. And you see, if we don't allow ourselves to, to get into the word, if we don't allow ourselves to allow Jesus Christ to get in us, then, as I said before, another voice will. When Deacon J.B. was ministering, I was, he was talking about, what is it, popping mollies and having, you know, and doing all these, this stuff, amen? 
outside of what God wants us to do. That's the temptation that he gives to Christian people. He wants us doing all of that because he knows that if we don't have the word in us, and we're going to find out what the word will do. And of course, if we don't have the word in us because we are reading the word, because we are studying the word, because if we're not meditating in the word, and if we're not looking for a word for God to speak to us in, guess what? The enemy is definitely going to come and tell us, oh, you don't have to do that today. How many people have been told, you don't have to go to church tonight? You need to rest. You need to do something else. I mean, you just in, you just in church all the time. Anybody ever just been told you're in church all the time? And the devil is saying, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Because he's trying to get up in what? Our mindset. He's trying to get us. I want you to go to Proverbs 6. And we're going to look at why the word is so important. And why we need to do what we need to do to start a regiment in the word. Just open it up. Read something. Don't, don't get up in the morning. Open the Bible. How many people pray first thing in the morning? Oh, that's just about everybody. Get up and pray. Then if you get up and pray, that's a routine, right? If you get up and pray, then the next thing you should do is get, do what? Open the word. Well, let's go to Proverbs 6. I'm going to read, I'm going to start at the 20th verse. And this is a father talking to the son, a mother talking to the children. It says, my son, keep your father's command and do not forsake the law of your mother. Bind them continually upon the heart. Tie them around your neck. When you roam, you, hear, you heard that, when you roam, when you start going in different directions, the word will do what? It will lead you. When you sleep, the word will do what? It will keep you. And when you awake, the word will speak with you. Because how many of you know the word is alive? That's why the enemy does not want us in the word, because the word is alive. It's a person. For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is a light. Reproofs of instruction are the way of life. And I'm going to stop right there, because reproof, what is reproof? What does the word do? It brings correction. It shows us what is not right, and it shows us what is right. Amen. We have to be reproved many times. Because how many of you know that, that the enemy wants us to go, get out of line and go in a different direction and, and go toward the left and to, toward the right? And Jesus is saying, I want you to go straight ahead. But the enemy will tell us to go into a different direction. But instruction comes from the word of God. 24 says, verse 24, to keep you from evil whom? Women. So it's talking to the men. Why do you think, and it's talking to women too, but why do you think uh, this particular passage is talking to men? Because the man has an ordained purpose to be the leader. How many of you know that Adam was supposed to have led Eve. But instead, what did he do? He began to follow her. And the Bible says that Adam knew what was right, but Eve did not know. And so I said, if, if Eve didn't know, that meant that somebody didn't tell her. Because how many of you know, as the priest of your house, you have to give direction to your household. And if that direction doesn't come, expect direction to come from another way. And how many of you know that, that Satan will make sure that your house has direction? And so it goes on to keep you from 
the evil woman from the flattering tongue of a seductress. Do not lust after her. Beauty in your heart, nor let her allure you with her eyelids. For by, for by means of a harlot, a man is reduced to a crust of what? Bread. So in other words, the wrong women in your life is going to bring you down. It's going to bring you down. And how many of you know this is a message for women and men? Because how many of you know it's showing how it's, it's showing the power that women have. That we have power to lead people in the wrong direction. And if we are leading somebody in the wrong direction, you're about to reduce somebody to poverty is what that's saying. And it says, an, an adulterer will prey upon his precious life. Can a man take fire to his bosom and his clothes and not be burned? Can one walk on hot coals and his feet not be seared? So is he who goes into his neighbor's wife. Whoever touches her shall not be innocent. That's a whole sermon right there. That's a whole sermon. Because what it's saying is the fact that if you want to be reduced, and I'm just not going to just, just leave it at just um, the harlot and, and all of that that goes on. We're looking at sin. We're looking at when we're not doing what God is calling us to do, when we're not following the precepts of God and we're doing our own thing, then we will be reduced to, and when we say poverty, it may not be the kind of poverty that we think about, but it can be poverty in getting the right person, poverty and being able to move forward in the things of God. See, the enemy wants us to miss purpose. He wants us to miss destiny. So he wants women, see, see women, we gotta look at the fact that, how I many of you know that, that women know how to seduce? It's, I heard a big amen there. But a man that follows the word of God will not fall into the trap because the enemy will set up somebody. And how many of you know that's why we all have to be careful? Because he will set somebody up. Somebody wasn't even intending to do that. But if a door is open and if there's things going on and, and those doors are not closed, you're going to end up pulling somebody into a snare, and then, and, and, and guess what? Somebody can only be pulled in a snare if they have doors open. And so that we, can, we can't blame one person and then just the other person off the hook. Because how many of you know that it works together? All things work together for the good of them that what? Love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. His purpose. And if we look at the fact that his purpose is what the devil is after. He wants us not to walk according to the precepts of the word. That's why we don't get in the word the way we should. We should, by today, this is Friday. From last Friday to this Friday, we should have been in the word at least 14 times. And somebody laughed. <laughs> That's the truth, isn't it? Because 14 days means that we are piling up the word in us. And how many of you know that if we don't pile the word up, the Bible says the word that we have hidden in our hearts, so we won't do what? Sin against God. So we're hiding the word in our heart. But if we're not hiding the word in our heart, guess what? It's going to be easy to sin against God. But we don't want to do that. I want you to go to chapter 7 of Proverbs. Just skip right over to chapter 7. And it's just going to, I'm just going to read 
a few of the passages here. It says, my son, keep my words. And that's God telling us, sons and daughters, keep my words and treasure my commands within you. Keep the commands and do what? Live. Because if we don't get into our word and understand what God wants, we will die. That's why it says, keep my commands and do what? Live. And my law as the apple of your eye. That's the word of God that he's talking about. Bind them on your fingers. Write them on the tablets of your heart. Say to wisdom, you are my sister. Because guess what? Wisdom comes from the word of God. This way, if you want wisdom, it's going to come. And, and how many of you know any other kind of wisdom is not from God? The only wisdom that we need is in what? The word of God. It says, say the wisdom, and I'm on verse 4 of 7. It says, say the wisdom, you are my sister, and call understanding your nearest kin. Because didn't Bishop tell us that we should pray for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding? I heard him say that. Anybody heard him say that? Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And we know why. Because wisdom is your sister or brother, and understanding is your nearest or next of what? Kin. That they may keep you from what? The immoral woman. From the seductress who flatters with her word. And then we're going to go on. We're just going to read this whole little story, and, and then I'm going to talk about it. It says, for at the window of my house, I looked out through my lattice, and I saw among the simple. Did you hear that? Among the simple. You see, the devil is looking for simple people that don't know the word. And saw among the simple. I perceived among the youths a young man devoid of what? Understanding. Passing along the street near her corner. Whose corner? That one that's trying to seduce. Amen. That one that's trying to draw us away from God. That one that's trying to take us down the wrong path. It doesn't have to be a harlot. Amen. It could be something else. It could be somebody else. But anybody that's taking you away from God, showing you the wrong direction, having you to eat the wrong food. How many of you know? We even have to pray over our food. And then, if we don't do this, how many of you know that we will fall prey? Anybody want to be prey to the devil? I don't think so. But here she goes. It says, passing along the street near the corner. And he took the path where? To her. Who said that? To her house. Did she have to go? Did he have to go to her house? Did he have to go there? He did not have to go there. But because he was void of what? He was void of understanding. How many of you know? The devil took over and said, hey, go there. Go over there. And you see, that's why we need the word of God. Because he didn't know where to go. He didn't know the direction. He was void of understanding. And that's what the devil wants us to be, void of understanding. And so it goes on. And he took the path to her house in the twilight, in the evening, in the black and dark night. So just because it says the black and dark night, it lets you know that it was a plan of Satan. Amen. Amen. Because he likes to do things undercover. And that's why whatever is done in the dark is going to get brought to what? The light. Especially if we are saying that we are Christians. The spirit of the Lord will go over time to try to pull us out of the darkness. But if we just choose to go there, how I many of you know he'll let us go into an open shame? Amen. We don't want to. Timothy said, yes, he will. 
We don't want to go into an open shame. We don't want to go someplace that God is not taking us. Because this man, void of the knowledge of God, we can say is a young man who has not been in his word, has not listened to the word coming from the pulpit, has not been in prayer. I mean, if you know that we can go into prayer and the spirit of the Lord will show us what to do and where to go and say, turn away from that. Go that direction. But if we don't take it, I mean, if you know, many times that temptation will overwhelm somebody. Anybody ever been over? No, you don't have to raise your hand. But if you've ever been overwhelmed by temptation, the enemy is going to throw that dart and throw that dart and throw that dart and throw that dart until you fall for the temptation. It's a trick of the enemy. It's the devil trying to say, you don't, you, you, you call yourself a Christian? You say you worship God? Look what you doing. You followed me. And he's like, yeah, you belong to me now. How many of you know, I thank God for grace and mercy and that he will fight for us to the end. He will not just let us just go down like that. That's the God we serve. We will not go down that path without the Lord trying to get us back. But if we just break loose, Oh, no, I ain't going back. Well, he's going to say, okay, go, go, you know. He's not going to force. How I many of you know the Holy Spirit is a gentleman? He's not going to make you do anything. He's going to try to pull you into a choice. Come out of that. Come out of that problem. Come out of that relationship. Come out of that where you don't need to be. And how I many of you know coming out of a relationship is hard? Well, for some folks, but you got to make a choice. I know somebody in this room, uh, and I'm not, gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm not putting anybody out there, but I know that somebody made a choice to go to the street to get out of a relationship. And they got out of that relationship, and the Spirit of the Lord found them a place to go. Because how I many of you know, we got to make a choice. And that choice is, are we going to stay in the mess or am I going to get out of the mess? And it's whatever mess you're in. It could be a drug mess. It could be any kind of mess. And how many of you know that a mess is a mess if, we don't, if we're not in the Word of God and we don't know how to pull ourselves back up out of something? If we just stay in it, that's right, Miss Lois, make it plain. <laughs> Well, let's go to verse 10. It says, and there a woman met him with the attire of a what? A harlot and a crafty heart. How many of you know that Satan has a crafty heart? He set it all up. And then it went on, to, it goes on to say, verse 11 said, and she was loud and rebellious. Her feet would not stay at home. At times, she was outside at times in the open square, lurking at every corner. So, excuse me. So she caught him, and what did, he, what did she do? Kissed him with an impotent face. She said to him, I have peace offerings with me. Today, I have paid my vows. What kind of vows did she pay? What, what, what? Anybody kind of, I was looking at that. I said, what vow did you pay? You sure didn't pay it to the Lord. She paid her vow to the devil. And, and how many of you know, if she paid her vow to the devil, she pulled somebody else into her web. Somebody void of what? Of understanding. So I came out to meet you. She's telling them. She's telling the one that's void of understanding. So I came out to meet you, diligently to seek your face. Look, that's the way God seeks us. But she's a, the devil seeks the same way. He says, diligent to seek your face, and I have 
done what? I have found you. Somebody stupid, foolish, ignorant, and all of the above. And then I'm going to jump down to where it says, where it says, verse 19, and, and this is messy too. This is messy, 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 messy. For my husband is what? Not at home. Whoa. For my husband is not at home. He has gone on a long journey. He has taken a bag of money with him. In other words, he's going to splurge for a long time <laughs> before he goes back home. So we, so I, we got all this time. I mean, you know, the devil, I'm just going to say the devil is a liar, a father of lies, and will come home on the appointed day. So in other words, you can just stay here. How I many of you know? Stay here where? In what? Hell. Because all those days, let's say he's gone a month, every day he's being pulled further and further and further and further down till he will not be able, because he's already void of what? Understanding. He's already void of the word. And so by the time he gets pulled down, and she sends him out. I mean, if you know, he'll be so full of <laughs> that he will know what direction to go in. He will not. How I many of you know, I thank God for Jesus. I thank God for God, the Holy Spirit. I thank God for mercy, grace. Because if there is no mercy in this, he would never have a chance. He would never have the opportunity. The Spirit of the Lord will try to pull him to what? His word. That's why we got to get in our word. That's why we have to see what, what God is saying to us. I read the whole book. of. I, I just decided I was just going to read a whole book of something. So I read this whole book of Matthew. And I, I was looking at the fact that Jesus was teaching and teaching and teaching he taught so much that my, my head was about to spin because he was teaching so much. But the thing about it was this. He was teaching, but his disciples, they had the word with him. Jesus is the word of God. They had the word with them. Yet living and talking and walking and moving and healing, doing everything, setting that example. And when he told them what they didn't want to hear, when they told him, what did they tell? What did he tell them? He says, I got to go to Jerusalem, and then I'm going to suffer, and then they're going to do this, that, and the other to me, and then um, the authorities are going to take me, and then they're going to crucify me. But he told them on what? The third day, I'm going to rise up. They didn't hear the third day. They didn't hear nothing. And, and how many of you know that your friends are dipping in the cup with you, and those might be your betrayers? That's why you have to have discernment from the word of God. Because Judas was with them, and he dipped in the cup knowing that he was going to betray Jesus. So we got to look at the fact that we got to know who it is that we are dealing with. Who are we rubbing elbows with? Who are we all up in somebody's face? We don't know these people like that. But because of the fact they tell us a good word, oh, you look so nice, oh, you look so good, oh, wow, you're so handsome. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, you start getting all puffed up and how many of you know getting puffed up for the what the fall gotta be careful puffed up for the fall the devil comes to what steal kill and destroy but let me tell you the truth it's okay if he 
tries to steal and destroy, but he's after the what? The kill. He's looking to kill us. He don't want us to stay. He, does, he wants to get rid of us as fast as he can, and he's hoping that we go down to hell. He's already going there. But because of the fact, God said he'll fight our battles. How I many of you know there's power in prayer? Amen. There is so much power in prayer. We cover those people. I'm covering everybody in my household, in my family. I was just like, oh, y'all grew up knowing God. I had one that was speaking in tongues when he was 15 years old, and all of a sudden we, we in black life or whatever, this, that, and the other. <laughs> but guess what? It don't keep me from praying. I know for a fact that the Spirit of the Lord is going to remember where he came from. And I know for a fact that he's going to get drawn back. All three of my kids are going to get drawn back. I grew them all up in church. Everybody get, everybody going to get drawn back. Because I trust God. I know what the Word of God says. He says we'll be saved with what? Our household. The jailer, I mean, if you know. If God did it for the jailer, he can do it for all of us. Amen. Because we got folks. We got folks that need salvation. I got my granddaughters. They, they, they're young ladies now. One is a senior in college and one is running her own foundation now. But I pray for them. I said, Lord, cover them with your blood. Just in case, but I, I, you know how when you talk to them, you try to throw a little nugget in there, but you don't want to bam them over the head with a brick. <laughs> but so we just ease it to them, you know. You know God loves you. You know he gave you the opportunity to serve the poor people in this area. I said, that's the heart of God. Then I go on to something else. Because how many of you know, if we believe that God has, how many of you believe that God got your family? Yes. Let's get a Lord a hand clap of praise if you believe that God has your house whole. Because God didn't look at, he didn't look at what we were. He didn't, he looked at what we could become. And that's what we have to strive for. What God is working in us. He's making us into the image of Christ. And how many of you know that comes with some toiling back and forth sometimes? But if he is making us into the image of Christ, what we have to do is yield to it. He's given us the character of Christ so that we can be productive on this earth because the enemy, why does he distract like that? Why does he pull us away like that? Because he does not want us to come into what God has for us. That's why we have to fight that good fight of what? Of faith. That's why we just can't let the enemy come in and just take over our lives like that. We cannot just fall to the knee of the enemy. The Bible, you know, the Bible says, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. If you're going to bow to anybody, bow to Jesus Christ. Don't bow to the enemy. Stand up and fight. And say, you ain't going to have your way in me. No, not in my house. I'm taking control. The guy, uh, one of the guys that works in the... Um, car wash back there. He always comes up to say something. I bought, I bought them all Bibles. And um, he comes up and he says, you in charge. I said, you got that right. <laughs> Actually, Jesus is in charge, but I'm in charge in my little atmosphere that he's given me. And it was so funny that every time he sees me, he tells me, I'm in charge. And I said, that's a good reminder because I am in Jesus' name. And we got to say, we're in charge of our families. We're in charge of what God has given us. We are in charge of what God has told us to do. 
The enemy doesn't want us to come into it. He wants us to have fear. He wants us to be afraid to speak the word of God to family members and to those that he has put in position. How many of you know, he put us in position for somebody else. And when I say those that he put in position, I mean those divine appointments that he put in place for us. See, he put a divine appointment for us. But if we don't know the word of God, uh, if we don't know what it is that we need to say, how many of you know we'll be bumbling around and fumbling and they'll say, I don't think I want that God. Get in your word and the spirit of the Lord will illuminate the word. He will jump it off the page. He will. He will. Because how many of you know that if we allow him to do what he needs to do in us, we'll be able to do what we need to do for other people. Because let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise because we got to be in position. Because how many of you know we can birth out some folks? We can birth them out. And then there is a word for everything that we need. Because if we don't go into the word, read the word, take charge of that word, use the word, work the word, then the enemy will come in and lie, and he's the father of lies. He'll tell you, you don't need to read the Bible. You used to tell me that for years. You don't even understand it. You don't know what they're talking about. And I was like, I sure don't. But how I many of you know, we don't want to fall for that trick. We don't want to fall for anything, actually, unless it's the word of God. And, of course... I want you to go to Isaiah 30 and 21 because that lets you know that God is saying, I got you. I don't want you to turn to the left. I don't want you to turn to the right. I just need you to, if you turn to the right, it's because I told you. If you turn to the left, it's because I told you. If you go straight, if you go backwards, it's because I told you to do it. I want you to go to Isaiah 30 and 21 it says and this is god will speak to us this is the scripture that lets us know he will talk to us it says your ears shall hear a word behind you he's just gonna stand there and whisper in your ear uh go over there saying this is the way do what walk in it Whenever you turn to the right hand or whenever you turn to the left. What he's saying, he's going to whisper in your ear which direction to go. He's going to tell you. But if you don't know the voice of the Lord, we'll miss it. I'm just going to say we will miss it. Because of the fact, if we don't allow the spirit of the Lord to speak into our ears, We'll be void of understanding like that young man we read about. We don't want to be void of understanding. We don't want to be in a position for the enemy to come in and, and tell us, come with me and seduce us into a place where we cannot get out of it. Because how many of you know? The enemy goes in for the what? The kill. He goes in for the kill. And he's not not trying to kill his own. Who's he trying to kill? He's trying to kill the people that belong to God. And so if we know that, that, that he's trying to kill folks that belong to God, we gotta be smart, don't we? We got to have the wisdom, the knowledge, the understanding. But where do we get the wisdom, the knowledge, and understanding? Where do we get it from? It's from the what? From the word of God. I want you to go to Psalms 19. Anybody getting something out of this? Psalms 19, I'm going to start at the seventh verse. Say amen when you have it. It says, the law, which is the word of God, the law of the Lord is is what is perfect so what we when we follow the word we're following the lord we're following jesus 
Jesus is perfect. God is perfect. The Holy Spirit is perfect. It's three in one working on our behalf. Amen. Amen. The law of the Lord is perfect. Converting the soul. So if you want your soul converted to the right direction, you got to get into what? The word. It says the testimony of the Lord is sure. I mean, if you know that the word of God is God's testimony, it's what he's able to do. He's given us a testimony of what he's done for us. But he has a testimony too. And the testimony comes right out of the word because he wrote the word. Amen. Aren't you glad that he wrote the word? And the word is alive. The word walks. The word talks. The word speaks. We, we already went through that one, didn't we, Sharon? But anyway, the testimony of the Lord is sure. Making wise what? The simple. So you don't have to know all that to be wise. You don't have to know anything, but the word of God will teach you how to be, what? Wise. You can, you, can, you can have a second grade education, and the spirit of the Lord will make you so wise. Because when we open our mouths, the spirit of the Lord said, he will speak for us. So it's not us speaking anyway. It's the Lord using our vessel. But if we yield our vessel in another direction, how many of you know we'll be speaking for the enemy? And so if we speak for God, then he's going to do the speaking. And so it goes on to say, the statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The word of God is to make us happy. The word of God is to bring us into peace. The word of God is to, is to show us love. And it goes on to say the commandment of the Lord is pure. Because how many of you know God is perfect? And and enlightening the eyes. So if you want vision in the word of God, get in the word. And he will enlighten our vision. Amen. He will enlighten our eyes. He will make us see things that we would not ordinarily see. Amen. And then, of course, it goes on to say, Verse 9, the fear of the Lord is what? Clean, enduring forever. The judgment of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold. And so how many of you know the word of God has to be desired more than natural things? Many times we go after money. Many times we go after cars. We go after houses. We go after material things. But it says the word of God should be desired more than gold. Yes, much fine, more than much fine gold. Because the word is sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them your servant is warned. And in keeping them there is a great reward keeping the word of God. It, now, now, it just got through saying that it is, that it will warn moreover by your servant is warm, is warned. How many of you believe that the Lord will warn us? Yeah. That the Lord will tell us something? Yeah. That the Lord will say something, amen? Yeah. That the Lord will let us know what his plan is. Yeah. So how many of you feel that you're going to get into your word more. How many of you are going to go home tonight and jump in that word? Yep, I saw about two hands. <laughs> Three. <laughs> We're we, 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 we going to get in this word because how many of you know that if we don't get in the word, if we don't get in the right word, then uh, we're going to end up going down the wrong path of action. I want you to go to 2 Timothy 3.16. 
Right here it says in verse 16, say amen if you have it. It says all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof. There's that word again, for correction, for instruction in righteousness so that we can have right standing with God. And how many of you know that if we don't get in our word, we won't even know what correction is. We won't even know how to be corrected. Because if we are not corrected, that means that we're going to go straight down that wrong path like the young man void of understanding. And it goes on to say that the man of God may be what? Complete. The word of God is to make us complete in Christ Jesus. Thoroughly equipped, equipped for every good work. How many of you want to do a good work for Christ. I see four hands. I believe you. That good work is what God, Jesus Christ, see, we're disciples of Jesus. Jesus is the one that restored us back to the Father where the devil stole us away, amen? Jesus came, gave his life, paid the price, got us back so that we could do a good work for Christ. And so how many of you know the Bible's, the Bible says that we are a good work. And so because we are a good work, then God wants us to do a good work for him. Amen. But if we're going, if we're listening to the wrong voice, how many of you know that we won't be able to do it? He wants to thoroughly equip us in good works. And I have one last scripture. And how many of you know that we're going to get in our word? We're going to make it a regiment. We're going to give ourselves, you know, you know um, how many of you set a clock to wake up in the morning? Well, I got to set my clock. <laughs> Some of, several of us set our clocks. We wake up in the morning. So how many of you know, set your clock to read the word. Yeah. Set the clock to pray. I get up, I get up all kind of night. They, call, uh, they probably think I'm a night owl because I get up all in the night. I'm roaming around. <laughs> then I go in there, fall on my knees. Lord, thank you. How many of you know, we go into a little worship, put on my little praise music. And only thing with that, I didn't know, now I really didn't know this. I did not know that commercials came through when you put on worship music. <laughs> I'm like the devil. <laughs> He'll try, that's a distraction, y'all. And then uh, I found out that a lot of people don't, w w you know, they don't do D DVDs anymore because uh, we do everything on the phone, right? And I said, oh, no, I got to get a DVD player because I am tired of these commercials coming up when I'm trying to go into worship. But anyway, it's all good. As long as you're getting up trying to do something. As long as you're setting your clock and being purposely doing it. And I want you to go to Hebrews 4, and I'm going to read the 12th verse of Hebrew. It says, for the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit. And how many of you know? That soul and spirit is so close together that you, is, you, you would have to be some kind of some guy kind of to divide the soul and the spirit. Amen. Because they're on the inside, but they're both invisible. Amen. And so it has to be the word that would be able to do that. And of joints and marrow. That's a hard thing, too. Because how many of you know we're talking about the bones? We're talking about the marrow inside the bones. We're going to separate that. 
That killed somebody, wouldn't it? But anyway, the word of God can do that. It says, in joints and marrows, and the word is a discerner of the thoughts and intent of the heart. Now, we don't know what's in somebody's heart. But the word knows. We can look at somebody and we can think, how many of you know you could look at Judas back there and you would have think, okay, he's all right. He's one of the 12 disciples. But in his heart, he had malice against Jesus. And so how many of you know, Jesus already knew. He already discerned. He knew the intent of his heart. Now, we can have discernment too, but we'd have to pray for it. And then we got to make sure that it's not speculation. Oh, you know, the Lord showed me that you were over there on the south side of town and you were in the wrong group. <laughs> you were coming out the club. How many of you know? That ain't speculative. That, 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 that's not the spirit of the Lord doing that. The spirit of the Lord would say, the Lord God Almighty wants to bring you into a new place in him. He got a work for you to do. Because everybody already know that sin. Everybody know, people know that they, whether they or not, they are sinning or not. People know that. People know when they lying. I almost told one today. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't always answer the phone, right? I try to answer it, but I was trying to do some other things, right? I was trying to get myself ready and trying to be in a state in the atmosphere of the Lord. Amen. And the phone was right there, and I picked up the phone and answered it. And they said, is this Joyce? And I said, uh. <laughs> and I let them talk for a minute. And I said, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm not going to be able to talk right now. Goodbye. But I, I almost said, no, it wasn't me. <laughs> I would have had, but how many of you know we do that sometimes? We can't fall into that either. We can't, we can't fall into little bitty things. If you got something out of this, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. Let's give God honor and glory. Worthy of honor and glory. He's worthy of praise. Amen. Amen. And if you got one thing out of what I said tonight, you got something. If you got two things, well, you really got something. Amen. But anyway, we do want to make sure that you understand the value of being in your word. Amen. That the word is so profound that the enemy, he sets it up so that we don't get in it. And that's a trick that he has. And so if we understand that he's tricking us and that he's trying to say that there's Nothing, you know, you don't understand this. He's lying. The, because he knows the power that we have. And he knows that the word will bring more power to us even as we go into prayer. Even as we go into meditation, meditating on the word. We go into worship. That's strengthening our inner man. And of course, how many of you know that that word is going right into our spirit? So that's why you want to do it. Let's give God honor and glory one more time. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. Well, we're going to prepare our hearts to give. And all the ushers start moving, which is good. But we want you to write on your envelopes when you get it. I am, we call those, thank you so much. I appreciate you. I'm not the only one sweating, right? <laughs> How many of you know that when you're giving in this house, it's on good ground? We are a church of ministry. And how many of you know, this plaza has produced what mega churches cannot produce. Amen. 
we do so much. And how many of you know that in giving, we want you to understand that we need our local church, amen? We do have to pay the light bill, the water bill, and all the different, how many of you know? that? And we have many ministries in this house. We have a school. We have Jump In down the street. We have JGN. We have our own network. And we are bringing forth people on the network. Amen. And how many of you know, it takes funds to be able to run a ministry like this. And you can look around and see who is producing the funds for our ministry. And then I can look and I can tell you that sowing has brought so much increase in my life. It has brought it. Because how many of you know, I don't mind doing certain things. I do not mind using the car for something. I got a crash on the car. Anybody, if anybody knows a, a body man, <laughs> let me know. But anyway, I'm still learning how to get in my garage, okay? But anyway, God has somebody. Don't laugh at me, Timothy. <laughs> But anyway, I have, I, I'm trying to get in the garage, and I am so short that I can't see that I am too close to the side. And so I'm pulling in, and I hear this scratch. But anyway, God is good. God, he is good all the time because I said God will supply this need according to his riches and glory, so I'm not worried about it. I know that he's going to do a good work. Here's what I want you to write on your, write on your envelope if you still have it. I am in my word. We call those things to be not as though they were. I am in my word. I'm in my word. And you see, if you, if you write that down, that means if, even if you're not in your word, that's going to, pro, that's going to produce a mindset to want to be in the word. Amen. Because I always tell people, go to the book of John if you don't know what to read. Go to Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. See what Jesus did because you're going to learn all about Jesus in the gospels. But anyway, you want to do that. And the Bible says, give and it shall be given unto you, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Will men reach into their bosoms and give to you? And how many of you know? Anybody had somebody just walk up to you and just give you money? Yeah, I had that to happen. I just want to bless you today. And I said, hallelujah. But God is really good. I just want to encourage people like this word was really good like it's so important to be in your word like God will you will really start falling in love with God for yourself as you read and I, I could honestly say like I just started getting into my word I would say like the end of last year I like it's like being a thing like at first I used to just read Proverbs I'm like a proverb is a day keep the devil away like <laughs> I'll read it but then God was like, no, you need to keep reading more. And I listened to different podcasts. I was like so intrigued by this one young lady because she'll just give you straight Bible, make you read, flip through the pages. Yeah. So before you know it, I'm reading, I'm reading Matthews. I'm going through the New Testaments. Yeah. And then I get into Acts. And in Acts, one of the disciples, I think it's Acts 8, 26. I actually pulled it up. Acts 8, 26. Um, Philip the a angel comes to Philip and tell him to go into Jerusalem. And it's like, it's far from where Philip is currently is, but in Jerusalem, what was happening was a eunuch, I think I'm saying it right, a eunuch, a eunuch. He was reading the Bible, but he didn't understand what he was reading. And the Holy Spirit to, um, told Philip to interpret it, like what he was reading. So what I got from, and I, as I was reading that, I was reading, I'm like, and I just hear the Holy Spirit say, 
I'm better than a distant lover. So for me, because God deals with you according to your personality. So as you're reading, he's going to deal with you according to who you are, where you at, all of those things, because he knows you. You are his son. You are his daughter. And you'll start believing that as well as you read. So for me, distant lover, I started laughing so hard. Oh, my gosh. Because I used to like, I like little, I used to like secular music. I used to listen to Lil Boosie all the time. And Lil Boosie had this song, Distant Lover, but in the song he was saying like how he wished he could be with this girl, but she's so many miles away. My distant lover, so many miles away. So God's telling me I'm better than a distant lover. And he showed me that because he came, he took Philip from where he was all the way over there. So he said, I could be whatever you want, whatever you are. I can be all those things. Like I'm better than that. So like, I just encourage y'all to really, and I'm not, I'm not, it's different from coming from Pastor Elliot, but I'm y'all age. Like, I mean, <laughs> like she is wisdom and I'm like current. I'm like, no, she is right. Like you have to read for yourself, know for yourself who God is and you'll start falling in love with him. Now, when I read Psalms 91, cause another little thing about me, I'm gonna let y'all know, the guys that I used to date, like you have to know how to fight. You have, I want somebody that I know they can protect me. But as I read Psalms 91, Lord's like, I'm, I'm with you. I cover you. Like, I'm your, like, he, he talks about how he is shield and protect me, how he have angels at my feet. Like, it's a different type of love. Like, it's, a di it's different. So you'll find out, like, God really loves me. No, God cares about me. And you were saying, like, how he would take the, the veils off your eyes, honestly, on who he is. And it's not like, the Bible is the rule book. Like, he, it leads you and guides you in life. But sometimes, like, as us young folks, it's like, dang, you can't do nothing. But <laughs> God will let you know, like, I love you. It's a different type of, it's so different. I'm a, I'm a mother. So when I tell my kids they can't do something, I kind of explain. And God explains why as you read the word, why you can't do this and how he want to protect you, how he want to heal you, how he don't want you to have kids out with a wet lot because it's like a lot of things that come that they don't tell you, like, and I'm a living witness of it. Like, so it's so different when you read for yourself. So anytime somebody's on a pulpit, have your Bible, go back and read for yourself because you will know him personally. You're just going about this person's testimony. They, they're giving you from their understanding, their knowledge on what, how they interpret it because God comes to you according to your personality. So it's different when you just know him for yourself and read for yourself. And in the Bible, he will show you how the Holy Spirit will teach you, lead you, show you. You just gotta be patient like with anything. So. Wow. Wow. Ooh-wee. Wow, wow. I think that was her first sermon. <laughs> She did. I loved it. Please stand to your feet. Do me a favor. Go get the um, spray stuff for me. Wow, wow, wow. Man, she broke that down, didn't she? And I like the way she said, uh, you wisdom. I said, thank you, Lord. Because sometimes I forget. <laughs> I, I, I think I'm young folk. Too. <laughs> but God, he is so good, you know. He is so good. I need another one. He is wonderful. Because how many of you know, if that affected Shanice like that? Thank you. If, if that affected her like that, I think there's some other testimonies out there too. Amen? Because we're going to get in our word. Because we're living in a time we don't know what's going to happen down the pike. And if we don't have God and if we don't have the word, we will make some wrong moves. Amen. Because how many of you know they're trying to get us ready uh, for the Antichrist, aren't they? They're trying to get us ready for some stuff. But guess what? I just look at the fact that God knows how to protect his children. Psalms 91, that's my Psalms too. That I love that. I'm going to read that two or three times a day. Amen. And so we're going to point your hand to your seat. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we give you praise, honor, and glory, God. Father, we thank you for what took place in the service on today, God, in the name of Jesus. Father, we will hide your word in our hearts so that we won't sin against you, Father God. 
we will not be like that young man void of understanding. Father God, we will not follow the lead of a harlot in the name of Jesus. We will not follow the lead of sin. We will not follow the lead of the enemy taking us away from the things of God. Father God, we will, God, in the name of Jesus, purpose in our hearts, God, in the name of Jesus, to pray, to intercede, to read our word, and to ask you to enlighten our eyes of understanding. And God, we thank you and we praise you for Dr. Deron Hepburn, Pastor Fong Hepburn, our first family, God. Wherever they are, we ask that you would bless them, God, in the name of Jesus. Father God, we ask, God, that you would give them the desires of their heart, God, in the name of Jesus. Father God, we thank you, God, for each person that's under the sound of my voice, God, in the name of Jesus. Father, we ask, God, in Jesus' name, God, that this offering will go forth, God, to meet every need, God, according to your riches and glory, Father God. Those that sold in this offering, God, in Jesus' name, we ask, God, that you, God, would meet whatever it is that they need, God. If it's housing, if it's school, God, in the name of Jesus. If it's a job, God, in the name of Jesus. If it's more spiritual understanding, God, in the name of Jesus, Father God. Meet that need according to your riches and glory. And, Father, as we leave this place, God, Father, we cover 